This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Previously on X Month, 13 years ago. Billy! Hey, what's up? I just saw X-Men 3. Yeah, how was it? It was awful! Really? They focused a ton on Wolverine. Yeah. Like everyone dies. Dude! And they even kill off Xavier. Oh my god, this sounds like the worst movie ever. It is. I'm gonna hang up now because of how angry I am. As you should. Goodbye! Ten years later. Billy! Hey, what's up? I just saw Logan. Yeah? How was it? It was awesome! Really? They focus a ton on Wolverine. Yeah? Like everyone dies. Dude! And they even kill off Xavier! Oh my god, this sounds like the best movie ever! It is! I'm gonna hang up now because of how happy I am. As you should! This was worth staying in the same spot and never changing my clothes for a decade. Goodbye! Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. And welcome back to X-Month, where now we look at one of the most hated X-Men movies, if not the most hated X-Men movie, X-Men The Last Stand. With the directing chair now being filled by Brett Ratner, from one non-controversial director to another, X-Men The Last Stand was less than a critical darling and an absolutely despised addition to the X-Men franchise. Fans hated how many characters died, how unfocused it was, how it seemed to amount to nothing, how it killed President Kennedy, how it caused the Great Depression, and how it directed Norma the North 2. You couldn't contain the amount of hatred this movie got and still gets today. I kind of have a soft spot for it. Okay, I'm not insane. I know this movie is bad and doesn't work. From a structural standpoint, it's one of the worst sequels ever made, especially when you get to the end. But after how boring and wowless the other two were out of the original three, I kind of consider this one the most entertaining. It has the most risks, the most action, the most color, the most mutants, and the most compelling ideas outside of just Prejudice sucks! Oh yeah, we went there! Sure, its story and characters are weak and the ending doesn't really go anywhere, but I'm kind of used to that in these movies by now. I mean, what's worse, safe, bland, middle-of-the-road tedium, or batshit insanity that never once left you bored? Well, that's the geeky complication we're gonna analyze here today. Let's take a look at the clearly bad, but in my opinion, enjoyably bad, X-Men The Last Stand. The film opened several years ago with a mostly convincing age restoration of Xavier, played again by Patrick Stewart. Magneto, on the other hand, played again by Ian McKellen, is looking more like a PS4 character. When are you going to stop lecturing me? When you start listening. <laughs> and you're here because I need you. Oh yes, the pictures have told us. They go to visit a young Jean Grey who apparently has unbelievable powers to make people look less like their action figures. Jean's powers seem to be running amok, but Xavier says he can help her control it. Did you think you were the only one of your kind, young lady? And I hope never to bring this up or think about it the majority of times we meet. Oh, Gene, by the way, to save all the mutants of the world, it'd be extremely helpful if you could, you know, unleash that most powerful entity in the universe thing. Nothing. Nada. God, this better make more sense when your sons are stuck. Meanwhile, at a later date, guys, is this a timeline or a math problem? We get a pretty grisly scene of a young mutant trying to cut his wings from his back. This kid deserves a freaking Oscar for the less than one minute of acting that he's given. How do you? Dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, I can't wait to see the development they give this character to justify such horrific imagery. How much screen time does he have? Should I get used to things being dramatically built up with no payoff? <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it! Back in the not-too-distant future's past, we see Storm, played again by Halle Berry, and Wolverine, played again by Hugh Jackman, training young mutants in a lawsuit battlefield. The whole world's going to hell, you're just going to sit there? Come on, it's the third one. We're all on autopilot here. 
we're getting killed out here. Oh, you read the reviews. Logan has non-Russian colossus throw him at the threat, and a sigh of disappointment is given when you realize the upside-down fake sentinel head is far better looking than the actual sentinels we would get later. Class dismissed. Tell Bumblebee I love him. They turn off the holodeck, I mean danger room, and they're both owned by the same guy. As Rogue, Anna Paquin, is pissed that her boyfriend Iceman is getting too friendly with another mutant named Kitty Pride, played by Ellen Page. I mean, something's wrong. What's wrong is I can't touch my boyfriend without killing him. Other than that, I'm wonderful. Again, nailing her character great. Have I ever put any pressure on you? You're a guy, Bobby. Your mind's only on one thing. I'm gonna go talk to that Gambit boy. No, wait, that's what the fans would want. We don't do that in these movies. Meanwhile, Cyclops, James Marsden, is having trouble coping with Gene's death from the last movie. I know how you feel. Don't. When Gene died, I said don't. Maybe it's time for us to move on. You and I, that one night of passion, it's over now. Not everybody heals as fast as you, Logan. <laughs> well, I am pretty awesome. We then cut to Beast, I mean Beast, I mean Kelsey Grammer is Beast, I mean Beast. Yeah, they nail Beast. It's amazing how well they got this character down. From his casting, to his makeup, to his sophistication, to his animal-like fighting, even him reading upside down. Next to Wolverine and Xavier, this is as perfect a realization of a cinematic X-Man can be. A major pharmaceutical company has developed a mutant antibody. A way to suppress the mutant X gene. Permanently. How am I taking him so seriously when that ridiculous amount of makeup is staring back at me? He looks like a rogue game smurf and yet I'm hanging off of his every word! Even the world they inhabit seems a little bit more evolved. As mutants are now being hired into political office and people focus less on wiping them out as much as helping them out. Though even that's quite a loaded issue as well. Apparently a quote cure for mutation has been found, ironically in a mutant, who can take people's powers away if they come near him. They transform this into a drug that can take mutant powers away and unsurprisingly this causes a lot of controversy. I mean what kind of coward would take it just to fit in? Is it cowardice to save oneself from persecution? This is a callback to one of the best X-Men cartoons entitled The Cure, where mutants try to figure out whether or not it's ethical to be free of their powers. Give this movie credit for asking similar difficult questions. Is mutation something to be fixed, like bad vision? Or is it a part of your identity and what makes you who you are? Should you change or society change? Mutants have different responses depending on their powers. Not all of us can fit in so easily. You don't shed on the furniture. Is it true? They can cure us? They can give us real accents? There's nothing to cure. Nothing's wrong with you. Or any of us, for that matter. I do also give credit that Storm has a bit more character in this than the previous films. Though maybe it's just the better wig. Their affliction is nothing more than a disease. And this site, once the world's most famous prison, will now be the source of freedom. Yes, I'm sure going to Alcatraz to have people who see you as a disease genetically alter you won't be intimidating at all. These so-called mutants are people just like us. But I stand here today to tell you that there's hope. You know, I want to listen to this guy, but I keep looking around expecting to see one of the Penguin's goons to flip in and steal his baby. However, some groups are taking this further as Magneto infiltrates an angry gathering of mutants. By the way, doesn't anyone clean up churches in the not-too-distant future? Make no mistake, my brothers. They will draw first blood. The only question is, who will you stand with? The humans? Or us? I'll be selling my CDs in the back. I live stream Thursdays. You talk pretty tough for a guy in a cape. You know who you're talking to? Do you? The gritty reboot of Sonic the Hedgehog? Meanwhile, Cyclops returns to where Jean was lost, but discovers she's not quite dead. No, you're not. You'll be stone dead in a moment. <laughs> There's sadly a lot of truth to that. She shows off to Cyclops how powerful she's become by coming back to life, controlling his laser eyes, and as if that wasn't enough, she blows him up. <laughs> Oh no, not Cyclops. He was... a character? Anyway, I've seen Westworld. I know he'll be right back. Get to Alkali Lake. Xavier feels a great disturbance in the X-Force, so he sends Storm and Logan to check it out, and they discover Jean is still alive. But how can that be? Well, that much built-up Phoenix saga is about to pay off, involving aliens and firebirds and several levels of psychological and physical identity. The powers wrapped her in a cocoon of telekinetic energy. Okay. Jean developed a dual personality that in our sessions came to call itself the Phoenix. What? 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 Is the woman in front of us the Jean Grey we know, or the Phoenix furiously struggling to be free? 
So, no aliens, no firebirds, only one personality, and all of this is happening... because of water. Yeah, they say Xavier kept it dormant, but they never said what triggered it back to full force, so the only conclusion we can come to is... water. Just add water, boom! Crazy! Boy, The Wizard of Oz would have been a different flick if that was the outcome. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't, you evil witch! Dorothy, no! <laughs> you have unleashed the psychotic part of my mind, making me the most powerful force in the world! Yeah, Dorothy, what did you think would happen? Well, I thought she would melt! That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard you say! But I... No! I thought that no. she... No. No. Um, I'm still here. So the first person to be given the cure is the creator's son, the boy we saw in the opening named Archangel. In that, the credits call him that, but nobody in the movie ever does. Calm I can't down. do this! I promise you, it's yeah. fine. Warren, relax. Oh man, I'm glad he didn't take it. Oh, not for any ethical reasons, it's just the wings are the only way I can tell him apart from Malfoy. And just to be overly dramatic... Why no? Doors are for practical people! I'm here to shove a visual metaphor down moviegoers' throats! And maybe that metaphor would have worked if it wasn't used on characters who had less than five minutes on screen. Both the person being watched and the person watching are barely in this. Weird how feeling for an image and relating to an image seem to be intertwined. Now, I'm sure this will be underwhelming too, as Magneto plans to break out Mystique, who's been captured by law officials. Now what, is he gonna use his deadly marbles again? Maybe lift a car? Well, that was awesome. Oh, I mean, uh, nothing's good in this movie! Mm! He breaks her out, which I kind of enjoy, seeing how she broke him out in the previous film, and, eh, while in this mutant criminal grocery store, he decides to go shopping. James Matrix. He was arrested for being Seth MacFarlane five times when once was already too many. What do they call you? Juggernaut. He was arrested for quoting internet memes. I'm the Juggernaut! Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. One of the guards tries shooting the cure at them as Mystique gets hit and transforms into a human. Thus, Magneto abandons her. Presumably because she lied about being a real redhead. She's a shame. She was so beautiful. Now, on the one hand, I kinda like this. It emphasizes how deep his prejudice goes, and like most oxymoron bigots, he's consistent in how hypocritical he is. But there is one huge problem with this. The situation should go more like, Oh dear, well I better take you to my machine that turns people into mutants. I know it had a few problems, but with me being a scientist and there being great breakthroughs in DNA transformation, I can totally work with this. Oh wait, I guess that's off the table now. Okay, laters. I'm sorry, my dear. You're not one of us anymore. I mean, the fact that she grew up as Xavier's sister was totally fine, but... Yeah, that still doesn't connect to any of these. Beast is outraged that the cure has been weaponized without his knowledge, thus he tells the president he's resigning. Someone fired or resigning from the president's cabinet? Man, that's rare these days. Have you even begun to think what a slippery slope you're on? I have. And I worry about how democracy survives when one man can move cities with his mind. As do I. You and I know that it's only going to get worse. All the more reason why I need to be where I belong. Wow. Both of them are asking very tough, polarizing questions. Kinda makes you wonder what you would do if you were put in a similar scenario. No, oh, I mean it sucks! Every part of this sucks! It's Transformers 12! Meanwhile, the supposed most dangerous mutant in the world wakes up with just Wolverine as security. You know, it's becoming easier and easier to believe that the apocalypse happened four times in these movies. One of them is called that! And it appears she's not in control. Look at you, Logan. He's tamed you. Gene? There is no Gene, only Phoenix. Wait. <sighs> that remarkable metal doesn't run through your entire body, does it? But Fifty Shades of Jean Grey will have to wait as she busts out and goes to her parents despite her parents never showing up in the rest of the movie. Eh, it's not the first time in these films someone abandons what's supposed to be the most important! What the hell are you doing here? Visiting an old friend. Magneto and his goons are there as well as Xavier and him agree to approach her alone. I came to bring Jean home. Don't interfere, Eric. Just like old times, huh? She needs help. Okay. 
This visual needs sitcom music. One's a peaceful professor. The other, a genocidal extremist. Together, they have to convince a woman not to blow up the world because everyone thinks the Dark Phoenix is the only part of the Phoenix there was. Can they stop her insanity while having a little fun along the way? Fox presents Jean-Luc and Gandalf, some wacky wit from Wacky Brits. They do a good job making Jean pretty intimidating and downright creepy at times. But for going back to her childhood home, there's no exploring her past, her psychology, what led her to this mental state. She just starts tossing shit. Yeah, it's not like the Phoenix had any mental play whatsoever. That's it. Even the fight, despite it being impressively choreographed, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Magneto says, Nobody gets him, son. Well, obviously the first thing to do then is throw him inside. Though let's be honest, that was only done for this stunt. Which makes no sense, but I still friggin' love. As Jean takes house flipping a little too seriously, Xavier gives Logan one final look before being turned into powdered X-Lax. That's the look of a guy saying, you're going to be changing me in the near future. So X-Man, Xavier is extinct as Magneto steals Jean away and the X-Men realize they have to carry on not only without their leader Cyclops, but without their mentor Xavier as well. Gee, I've never seen that done in these movies before. We must carry on his vision of a world united. This hits our X-Men pretty hard, especially, oh, which one was Juno again? Kitty. Oh yeah, Kitty Pride. It has been over 40 minutes since we've given her or Iceman a scene, so. Yeah, there's nothing to help get over the death of your mentor like flirting with someone you barely know while your current girlfriend watches. What an ex-hole! Where are you going? You don't know what it's like to be afraid of your powers. Hello? I want to be able to touch people, Logan. I hope you're not doing this for some boy. No, it's for some boy. Oh yeah, that's totally what I'm doing. Well, if you want to go, then go. Just be sure it's what you want. Well, I don't know if it's what I want. I haven't asked Bobby yet! Douglas, I brought you a snack. Duh! Douglas, don't you ever knock? Douglas, were you looking at stamps? Douglas, it, it's not what you think. Douglas, I think it's time we had a talk. <laughs> Douglas, it's perfectly normal for a human being to want to look at stamps. Douglas, do you really mean it? Douglas, the only problem is it's such a hassle to go to the post office to pick them up. Douglas, you shouldn't have to go to the post office or just look at them online. You can print them out at home at stamps.com. Douglas, wow! Douglas, I'm talking. No one really has time to go to the post office, as Douglas's were busy. That's why Stamps.com is there as one of the most popular time-saving tools for small businesses. Douglas, you know when you mail out merchandise you have to go to the post office to get a stamp? Well, you don't have to with Stamps.com. Douglas, that's amazing! Douglas, I like pointing over that way for some reason. Wow! Stamps.com brings the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending out thousands of packages, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Wow! Douglas, stop saying that. Wow! Douglas, I take it back. It's growing on me. Wow! Douglas, it's annoying me again. But Stamps.com isn't- Wowie wow wow! Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just hand it to your mail carrier or drop it in the mailbox. It's that simple. Wow. Douglas, I just haven't said Douglas for a while, so I'm saying Douglas. Wow. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Not to mention, it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use Stamps.com. Wow! Douglas, I actually have a special offer for the people watching right now. Wow! Douglas, that's right, we're being watched, it's kinda creepy. My viewers get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type Nostalgia. That's Stamps.com, enter Nostalgia. Douglas, you see? Stamps are a wonderful thing, especially with Stamps.com. There I go pointing that way again. Douglas, thank you for being so understanding about Stamps. It makes me not feel so bad that I look up envelopes. Get out of my house! Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Hey 
everybody, just letting you know we're gonna be at C2E2 in Chicago. That's me, Brad Jones, Rob, Malcolm, Tamara, and a whole bunch of the Channel Awesome gang are gonna be there. We also have a panel, Movies Everybody Disagrees With You On, where you get to talk about the movie that everybody, well, disagrees with you on. It's your panel, it's a lot of fun. We've gotten a booth at this con a ton of times, it's a lot of fun, and we'll see you there. So remember how Jean, even though she wasn't really developed, I mean, okay, we're used to that in these movies, but she was at least a little creepy? We'll throw that out the window, as for the majority of the rest of the movie, she does nothing but give one blank stare. Again, something we've sadly become familiar with in these films. She made her choice. Now it's time we make ours. So if you're with us, then be with us. Again, give credit that at least Storm has a bit more character, taking a little bit more charge, and this maybe kind of ties into fans that believe she should have been the leader of the X-Men instead of Cyclops. But every time Jean is even close to being more developed, they always push away. In some cases, literally, like when Wolverine tries to track her down. I came for Jean. Do you think I'm keeping her against her will? Sorry, we're paying her by the line in this one. You should have seen the deal we got with Cyclops. You don't know what you're dealing with. I know full well. I'm gonna make you do stupid things. Ha 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 ha! Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! Ha ha ha! Quit hitting yourself! Now go! Look out! You run into Ash from Evil Dead 2! The SWAT team finds Magneto's army, but it turns out it was just multiple men as a diversion. Okay. I give up. Ah, ah, now I'm gonna be sent back to jail and have my powers taken away. Why did I agree to this? Magneto is actually throwing a mutant pride parade as he plans to get his army to Alcatraz via... The holy shit amazing scene. That's not X Men at all. No, no, not at all. That's, you never see that in a comic. It's not imaginative, not big or epic or anything like that. It's it's, it's, it's lazy. It's 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 stupid. It's incompetent. It's God. That still holds up. Though it is funny how it goes from dusk to complete night in a matter of a few seconds. And I do mean a few seconds. Actually, that reminds me. Hey, didn't we have a scene to shoot at dusk today? Uh, yeah, but sunset starts at 5 and it's 5 o'clock right now. But that should give us plenty of time to oh, shoot- Oh, no, it's actually 5.01 now, we just missed it. Curses! How did this happen? I don't know, climate change? How does that affect the sunset? I don't know, it's just always climate change. Things are always so strange when you two are around. Well, that's weird, because things get a lot more normal when you aren't around. Magneto's army plans to kill the boy supplying the cure, but they have a lot of obstacles to get through. In chess, the pawns go first. I call them the test audience. But the X-Men show up to stop them, and the, uh, <clears throat> not the least bit kick-ass climax begins. Trying to find something awesome in this movie, like Juggernaut and Kitty Pry chasing each other through concrete walls, pedestrian setting projectile cars on fire, boring Kelsey Grammer as Beast launching into the air, roaring and ripping people to shreds. <sighs> Have you even read an X Men comic? Where's Xavier showing a girl around Cerebro for hours? That's the kind of excitement that ignites the imagination. Oh, don't worry though. There's still plenty of stupid to go around. Like this line that launched a million groans. Don't you know who I am? I'm the juggernaut, bitch! Yeah, if you want to know what every X-Men fan's reaction was to this internet meme suddenly making it into a big blockbuster movie, it went exactly like this. Don't you know who I am? I'm the juggernaut, bitch! Oh. And there's this scene where the mutants tried to kill the scientists in charge. You're the guy that invented the cure, right? Yep, that's her. Please, don't do this. 
I only wanted to help you people. Do we look like we need your help? All we need is a script, Doctor! Ah! Yay! That kid who had less screen time than the catering credit got to save his dad! Because that's what it's all about! Wolverine even manages to learn how to work with the X-Men as a team. We work as a team. Best defense is a good offense. Because that's what it's all about! Also gotta love how Beast resigns because they weaponized the cure, and he uses the weaponized cure to inject Magneto! You and I know that it's only going to get worse. All the more reason why I need to be where I belong. In the hypocritical gray zone jacuzzi that this film is keeping me nice and warm in. No! Jean decides once again to go berserk, though, as she begins wiping out everybody on the island. What have I done? Is it me or does it look like he's asking the audience that upon finishing the film? What have I done? <laughs> you ever wonder if this is Thanos' porn? Like, he just stays up late at night like... Oh yeah, turn him to dust, you sexy thing. Turn him to dust. Got him, only. It looks like Wolverine is the only one who can approach her due to his fast healing. I guess that kind of looks like a firebird, even though you promised us an actual firebird, but I guess that meant a symbolic firebird. Look, I know you want to see me naked, but can I go one of these movies with my body mostly covered? I'm tired of people seeing my huge Ackman! He gets her back to her normal self just so he can kill her. Yep, she came back and went crazy just so she could die again. Yeah, that's actually all they do with her. Man creates Gene. Man destroys Gene. Man recreates Gene. Man destroys Gene. Man, this movie's bullshit. And the ending only gets worse from here. We see Kitty Pride at Xavier's grave. Because clearly no other character had a stronger connection with him. As these movies have now gone full force into making Rogue barely recognizable to 100% unrecognizable as she had her powers taken away. This isn't what I wanted. I know. It's what I wanted. Aw, so she did it for herself. Now let's reconnect with a boy who was about to cheat on you because he couldn't touch you and remind yourself that it had nothing to do with him. Cause that's what this is all about. Hey look, Wolverine is proud that Beast is back in the White House, putting their two-sentence rivalry behind them. Way to go, Furball. Because that's what this was all about! Logan tries to figure out if he owns the school or what. Nothing else is discovered about his past despite the other films talking about it. I mean, poorly, but they did talk about it. And we see Magneto's powers are coming back, proving the cure pointless. Xavier comes back to life, proving his death pointless. But that Archangel kid is still flying around in the background for a millisecond. Thus, that's what this was all about. I have no idea what this movie was about. For a film called The Last Stand, it doesn't stand by jack shit. This movie raises the stakes, raises the body count, raises the issues and questions, and yet never follows all the way through, so it ends up saying nothing. Want proof? There's an alternate ending where Rogue doesn't get the cure, proving even they had no idea what they were trying to say. I couldn't do it. I'm sorry, Bobby. This is me. The whole movie just feels like a lot of big scenes that never connect or build up to anything. And when you have a movie that makes a lot of huge choices resulting in a lot of huge deaths, it has to amount to something. You can't back down on that. With that said, there are still a lot of amazing scenes to appreciate. Some great action, great effects, great makeup, great ideas, and yes, even some great character moments. All of these scenes on their own would be fine. Maybe that's why a lot of them have so many hits on YouTube because individually they're really impressive and deserve more credit when people just scoff that there's nothing good in this film. But it's the equivalent of having all your favorite food on one plate. Alone, they're great. All together, it's a giant mess. So yes, in comparison to the other films that while slow and uneventful did have a beginning, middle, and end, this tosses all of that away for some big scenes that practically destroy what the other films were trying to do. 
In that respect, it's one of the worst sequels ever made because it disappointed fans who really got into these movies. But for me, I never got that much into these movies. I thought they were okay at best. I watched them because I liked X-Men, but these films never really represented X-Men. At least, not the X-Men I was familiar with. They were dull, colorless, restrictive, middle-of-the-road adventures from a franchise that was the exact opposite of that. This one at least was big, loud, fun, energetic, imaginative, visually stunning, action-packed, and had good dilemmas despite them never following all the way through with it. So while it is technically bad when I think of the bombastic, cool, adrenaline-filled X-Men fighting against varying types of prejudice, this is the one that gives me a more enjoyable time. So it's picking your poison. The safer, blander, but ultimately better put together films, or the over-the-top hyper punch fest that constantly insults your intelligence. Whatever you choose, one thing's for sure. For some, this is an enjoyably bad movie, but it is still a bad movie. Well, that about does it for X Month, and next week I have a brand new movie to review. <clears throat> Aren't you forgetting something? No! No, I'm not! There never will be another X Men movie! There never has been another X Men movie! A box on you! Wow, he has really repressed X Men Origins Wolverine, hasn't he? Yeah, that's why I put a copy of it under his desk to remind him he needs to review it. Oh, how do you know he'll find it? <laughs> he found it. Cool. I'm the juggernaut, bitch! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing Health Right International. This is a global health and human rights organization that was founded in 1990. Their goal is to leverage global resources to address local health challenges and create sustainable solutions. They've worked in over 30 countries with current projects in Kenya, Mexico, Nepal, Russia, the Ukraine, the United States, and Vietnam. So many people all over the world have been helped by this great organization, and you can play a big part in continuing that help. Click on the link below and show your support for the good things this charity does for good people.